Cocktail. Listen, let's just not even beat around the bush here. Yeah, let's, let's not let's not even pretend that we are not drinking heavily. Can we just at least welcome everybody to Vocal Gumbo Happy Hour? Can we remember to do that? Sure. Um, <laughs> why don't you do that while I add some lavender flowers to my drink? See, this is the thing, everybody. And if you've been tuning into Vocal Gumbo Happy Hour, you know that she flaunts this stuff. She gets super, super gloaty. And like, I've got lavender, dried lavender to sprinkle in my cocktails. And it's like, I, I, you know, I'm just like squeezing a lemon. I'm doing the old fashioned. Just squeeze. That's why we're so good together. <laughs> you know? Well, what is your cocktail? Your cocktail of choice is your gin. Um, I've got a, a local uh, Vermont gin. Which way can I get it? Um, I can see kind of, everything is oh, backwards. Look at that. It's yeah. it's got honey, honey and juniper. <gasps> oh, sort of herbaceous and sort of sweet. And uh, like it's you. handcrafted in the heart of Vermont. <laughs> and I've, I've added some delicious elderflower tonic water to oh. it. Look at you. I basically, I have some Tito's vodka. These are called ice cubes. You make them in the oh, freezer. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and, and I've made some soda stream seltzer and a squeeze of lemon and a little hint of a, of a rose syrup. See, now what are you bing, talking about? Bing, bang, boom, baby. Here we go. Yeah, I love it. I love your concoctions. Cheers, everybody. Oh, it's cheers, Friday everybody. night. Welcome to Happy Hour, Vocal Gumbo Happy Hour. Lauren and I actually had a gig, believe it or not. Score. <laughs> we did. We had an outdoor gig um, at the beautiful Mohunk Mountain House in New Paltz. And um, it's kind of it's kind of a, a dream destination um, up in the hills, nestled, nestled up in the mountains around a lake. And it's kind of ideal. Like, and when you get to do a, a little gig there, you kind of feel like you've had this wonderful remove from the real world and you're, you're back in some old time where time has stood still. Right. Well, it's a Victorian hotel. Actually, it's a hundred years old. So, and, and the family, original family still owns it. The smiling mm -hmm. family. Yep. But they really, really keep it up. And their COVID precautions were quite rigorous, which we were thrilled about. Yes. I feel like we were maybe the only people in the hotel, give or take. It was really lightly, um, lightly filled. And also because we had, because we had, we had that, we had that, that crazy tropical storm on Monday night. Um, I think that also just uh, prevented people from maybe coming up on that particular day and maybe moving the date. But we were singing out on the veranda overlooking the lake. And we were supposed to be on the dock, but the dock literally became unmoored when the high winds came in. There we are, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that ain't going to happen. That was uh, the foggy day, and uh, and it just continued to have weather throughout the whole day. So Yeah, but then the sun came out, and we were able to sing on the porch, and we had our friends John Martino with us, and your partner, wonderful partner, Darman Meter, who is so talented, it's just, want to slap him. I did. We, I did actually slap him. Oh, good. Okay. So I took care of that, and my daughter Ella sang, which was also fun. And we just kind of did this quick little little gig, and I guess kind of remembered how to do it. It was so funny as we started to started to perform, and it was like, oh, oh, there's that feeling. We're we're singing together. We're hearing music in real time. Yeah, and people are listening. They were they were away from us and mm -hmm. with masks on and stuff, but there were oh, people yeah. that were listening. So that was yeah. kind of weird. And I don't know if you experienced this or if any any of you out there who are musicians who may have done a, gotten out of the city or maybe are out of the city, when you come back to your house and back to reality in a way, it's it's a little bit of a, a mind adjustment. Yeah. 
you know, it was for me because I've been I've been in Manhattan now for six months in in my apartment. Yeah, no, it's kind of like so, get back into your little your little hole. Get, get back into in your there. Hole. Don't don't think for a second that you can get too too comfy with this notion of walking walking free in the world. And yeah, it's a very very tricky tricky thing. And and we we appreciated it, but we were also extraordinarily cautious and careful and um yeah so yeah, but it, it, it was like it was a wonderful wonderful thing yeah i mean for me to to, yeah. uh, to swim in a lake and and breathe some fresh air was heavenly i know Absolutely i know heavenly. you have been you have been sequestered my girl but you but we did soak it up we sang some tunes and we ate too much food yeah probably probably did we celebrated my birthday that was fun that's right and so i I had cake at least two or three times a day, which is great. Not for your figure, but it's great for your, your other endorphins that like to have a happy dance. Right. <laughs> and we have we have so many things to tell you, people. Yeah. First of all, we have um, we promised you vocal gumbo masks, and we have delivered vocal gumbo masks. Care of our dear friend Catherine McKeever. Now <laughs> they're really you, beautiful too. You, they're they're kind of soft. They've got this little insert where you can you can take this you little can put a filter. Yeah, filter in there, and um, they're they're lovely, and they go with all kinds of outfits. Um, your tennis, they go directly from tennis to uh, to to dinner on the patio. <laughs> patio. Yes, they're, <laughs> they're multi-purpose, and you can get your own. <laughs> uh, and we will uh, post the uh, website. And the uh, specific specificities, specificities, the specifics. Um, well, on our on our page. Yes. yes. Right. But we also have a special special. What's special that thing? What's, what's that you have? This there, is a Janice? vocal gumbo flask wow. for those times when you just gotta <laughs> have a drink. And you can keep it in your yoga pants uh, or yep. your, you know, wherever. You can keep it uh, with you at all times. And this is this is the first five people to buy tickets um, are going to be able to get an autographed flask from us. Well, it's forty dollar ticket. Yes, right. a forty dollar yeah. ticket. Yeah. And we yeah. are going to announce those people on our next episode, musical episode, which is August fourteenth. Yes. You want to tell us about that, Lauren? Well, I just want to make a one recommendation. If you're not a heavy drinker, it's also perhaps a, a nice decanter for your perfume. Take a little finger and put it behind, you know. You know, you can put anything you know, in a flask. A little, <laughs> you can do your little, you know, uh, water with the... Uh, you know, you could, put this, you could put hand sanitizer in it. Good thinking. Yep. Or you can make like a nice gazpacho and put it in, <laughs> put it in there. So again, the first five people to buy a forty dollars ticket okay. to our August fourteenth show will get auto delivered to their home an autographed flask from Lauren it, and I. Ordinarily, Janice and I would deliver it you via bicycle, but we're a little out of shape, so we're not gonna we're not gonna promise that. But but ordinarily we would. Well, and so we've got a great show. We, did you want me to tell everybody who's coming on August 14th? Is that yeah, what I, was, I, was, do? I was hoping you might start, start it. Really? Well, I want to, if everybody's seated and comfortable and ready for, you know, to be shocked and amazed, we have the divine Kenny Washington. Oh my God. Okay. I mean, talk about a voice that will just I don't know. Melt it, you. It will melt it, you. World peace could be achieved if he would just stand at the top of the building and sing. Uh, yeah, Kenny Washington, we we adore him, and we're we're working up a beautiful piece with him. Um, and uh, uh, Rioton, which is a fabulous uh, vocal group uh, from uh, Finland or Finland, Finland. Yes, yes. yes. And Alame Fernandez from Singapore. Uh, we're going to do a nice piece with her. She's got a swinging, beautiful voice. Um, and we're, we're looking forward to doing presenting that. We have uh, Kai Kitamura and Mika Shino uh, from Japan. And she is a traditional uh, singer. And we're going to, Janice and I are going to do our best to honor the tradition 
And uh, yeah, we're going to sing in Japanese a little bit. And uh, Kai, Kai, as you may know, he, he was on our last episode. He is a vocal uh, mouth mouth vocal percussionist mm -hmm. and bass singer. Yes, he's he's just wonderful. So we're we're so excited to um, feature them. And Anne Hampton Calloway. No, Wayne. Yes, she, shut up. You shut up. She's doing it. She is going to share a piece. She is so prolific during these times, and and is writing and and sharing um, her music all all the time. And and I just I love it. We're so inspired by her energy and her positivity. And of course, we'll have a young artist. Uh, TBA, we kind of know who it is, but you know, we're we just have to, yeah. You know, and we're we gonna wait have, for something. We're gonna have some wonderful instrumentalists who are gonna join in the fun, including but not limited to Andy Ezrin, John DiMartino, Vince Jericho, and, and Leo Traversa, yeah. and Yo Tom Silberstein on guitar. Yes, and if, and my friend Martin Bejarano could very well be my partner in crime on my on my piece that I'm presenting, which I'm, I'm so, so, so excited about. So we've got so much music that we are still, believe it or not, folks, we are writing and recording and editing every day this week. So if you don't um, hear from us between so now and the bug show, us, don't please. bug us. We're really, really busy. Don't call us. <laughs> But before before that all happens, we we just we just want to say, please buy a ticket. Um, buy your ticket in advance because it lets us know how much you love the show and want us to be doing this crazy, insane adventure. So feel free to do that via PayPal or Venmo, and that'll make us super duper happy um, as we progress through the week. Thank you so much, Gumbo Lights. Um, yes. I think it's time we we really need to bring in our first first guest, and I adore this man. He's been a friend of mine for many years. He's uh, a major force, I think, in the history of modern jazz and rock and roll. Yes, uh, as as a keyboard player, producer, composer, author, you know, just multi talented and a swell guy, just a sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I feel like he's the kind of person that um you feel an affinity for even even from afar. Like you're like, I totally wanna have a beer with that person. And I think I might have a beer with that person. Yes, you <laughs> might just well have a drink if, unless he's finished his drink already. I hope not. Let's, ben let's find Sindrin, out. Sin, ben. 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 Ah, he's almost finished. I need a, I, yes, I'll need a refresher soon. That's, uh, this is true. Hey, Ben Sidrin. Hi, Janice. You're you in Madison, Wisconsin, great. yes? I'm in Mad City, Wisconsin, yes, yeah. where I'm, I'm sheltered in place. Yeah, you know, you, you look freaking fantastic. You never change. Oh. What's up with that? Uh, yeah. the, the old portrait of somebody in the attic is getting older. And I, <laughs> no, I don't. I, you know, I, I have to say that uh, jazz will keep you young or it'll kill you one or the other. And I guess <laughs> I went the one way. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I, I agree. I, I think you're exactly right on that. It either really feeds you and and keeps you going. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Are you out working in the yard? Are you a bicycler? What's that sunshine on well, your face? Well, I live uh, very close to this uh, very large uh, arboretum that the University of Wisconsin owns. So I'm out there every day. Oh, so and good. It's just beautiful here. We've had the most beautiful month of weather. And Madison is like this very peaceful little city. Uh, people are very responsible. They get masked up when they go out onto that's the great. main street. But you know, everybody's kind of in their yards and doing stuff. And uh, no, it's actually been strangely uh, peaceful the last. And uh, now you've months. got your your son and daughter-in-law and your granddaughter with you. Yes. I got Hiya, Leo. Hey, there's Leo. He's my tech specialist here. Yeah. And right. And um, uh, my daughter-in-law and mm -hmm. nine-year-old uh, crazy soul who's just... Uh, uh, she's an entire movie by herself. She's, she's delightful, a, a delightful young woman. Major every, motion picture. Every every household needs a nine year old in it, so they can just keep you on your toes. Just when you think you you know something, oh. they kind of they kind of walk into the room and let you know you're you're a fool. <laughs> you are. So, you sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, my nine year old is now eighteen. Uh -huh. She still reminds me that I'm a fool for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but um, yeah, they they are nice, nice. They also keep you young, right? Yeah, they, they, that that also helps because you got to keep up with them, and that's really beautiful. Well, uh, I, I I'm reminded, uh, Janice, that the first time you met this person uh, mm. was uh, thirty eight years ago in Tokyo, if you remember. That's right. I totally remember six year old Leo Sidron. Aww. Yeah. I totally remember. And you know what? I have to say, you were one of the first people I ever saw that brought their kid on the road all uh -huh. the time. And that really stuck with me. Huh. And that's what I did. And that's what Laura did. That's what I did. Yeah, I was just going to ask and you how my, many, my, my partner Cheryl how many did that. And, and my partner Ella did that, too. Mm -hmm. You wow. bring them with you and let them see what you do. Yeah. Well, and that's a real education. You know, there's nothing wrong with school if you got to fill up some time, but the real <laughs> education's out on the road for sure, right? <laughs> Especially now in the future, we have no idea what's going to happen in five years, but the road's going to be there. And if you got some wits about you, yeah. it's not a bad place to learn stuff. It, it's not. No, you can learn every single life lesson. Listen, and that can I just lace into like a the heavy duty question for you? Do oh, it, please. Janice. Dive in. Go. Go. Dive. I mean, I. I, as I mentioned, I adore you. And one of the things I've always loved about you is your search for meaning no. in life. In that, life. that kind of very spiritual pursuit, almost, a, and, and I feel very Jewish pursuit, always questioning, always looking for answers. How did jazz help you find your meaning? Well, uh, it's directly connected. This is really weird. But when I was, you know, like 11, 12 years old, two different words would jump off of any page at me. If they were on the page, I would see them immediately. One was jazz and the other was Jew. <laughs> and so at 13- Jay, Jay is the Jay, the Jays were dangerous. But it's true. I, I could look at a page of text and if that- and, So I had a bar mitzvah, which was totally meaningless. I had no idea what I was saying. I had no idea why I was saying it. It was just a mystery. But for my bar mitzvah, my uncle gave me a Horace Silver record, mm -hmm. and it changed everything. So they're That's very connected. Awesome. Isn't that wild how these random things affect you? You know, just very uh, getting something. I, I got some records at a raffle at a, a fair that my aunt was running, and they were from Atco Records. Sure. Right? And one was the Institutional Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. And the other was Vi Red. Oh, fantastic. And they both really, really had an effect on me. Yep. You know, yep. Isn't, it, isn't it interesting, though, those first musical epiphanies that you have? Because I remember I, even in your, your book talking about Tommy LaPuma, mm -hmm. I love how you describe his visceral moments of like when the music sort of passed through his body and uh, his heart or wherever you... You know, and I think we all have those moments where where a record or music just did something different to us than just say, well, that's a good tune or that guitar. You know, I like the way the guitar sounds, but it's like something that kind of just wakes up your, you know, your soul and you go, I need to eat that every day. Yeah. Well, and this goes to what Janice said, you know, jazz is the kind of thing where you're called. You're actually called to it. And the people who are who have been called to it know, know what that feels like. And their fellow travelers on the road. I mean, th this is something that uh, Phil Woods, uh, may he rest in peace, always talked about having been called and, and de dedicating yourself to the music. Uh, he used to refer to people as a bebopper down to his socks. You know, <laughs> right. the, the idea of being called to the music, I think it's true. It speaks to some people. Other people are curious. Some people are interested. Some people like it for various reasons. But anybody who's crazy enough to get out on this road and try to do this, you have to be called. It is a spiritual. You thing. have to be insane, really. Yes. Yeah. You have to be obsessed. You have to be obsessed. Yes. You, you know, have to believe it matters. You really yeah. have to believe it matters. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, can we talk about your book for a second? I mean, the, the Ballad of Tommy Lapuma. Oh please. my God! Well, first of all, we both. I should hold it up. Tommy. I don't have it. Yeah, let's. I, Let me go Lauren, you have it. You have I have it. it. I have it right here. Oh, oh there it is. The Ballad of Tommy. There it is. The Ballad of Tommy Lapuma. Always need to look at him, Tommy. And the thing, I love this. I, 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 I got Janice and I just did a gig, so she passed the book to me, uh, like a day and a half ago. So I'm halfway through this and halfway through the other because I, I, 
I fall asleep when I read now because I'm yeah. an old lady. <laughs> so, okay. It's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm like, come on, Lauren, you can do it. <laughs> okay. But I love it. And I, I just, I love from the start of, you know, Palermo to, to, to New, I mean, I'm like, I'm with you. I'm, I'm on the journey from the moment he's on the ship and then he's scrappy and then he's in the barbershop and then he's, you know, and I mean, I knew him of course, only, only as a, you know, a young adult. And I was still just not interesting no, enough to even like have a conversation with that man. When I New York him. voices were on uh, what label that Tommy ran GRP. 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 Yeah, right. yeah. But we didn't really get to work with him because right. we were kind of on our way um out so to speak and so we never got to actually you know be be live under his tutelage or or yeah. or, or be lucky enough to have him dream about something for us which would mm -hmm. have been really fun to have thought what what could he dream up for us to do that would be great i but think because at the heart of it he was still a musician oh, yeah. yeah and he wanted to be in the studio with the cats he didn't want to be in the control room i love that story i know yeah, that great, story right? he's like Peace you out. I'm out of the you have to find your, your comfort zone, right? Yeah. And when, when Mark Ruffin gets on here, I want to talk to both of you about, I mean, I went through the book and I, I copied down all of the rules of production that Tommy learned along the way and co I wrote them in a list. Yeah. So I wanted both of you to talk about that. But when well, did you he, meet uh, Tommy? At Blue Thumb? Yeah, I met Tommy in 1972. He had started this label, Blue Thumb, with his partner, Bob Krasnow, who was this very colorful character from the old, old James of Brown school of, of promotion. And Tommy uh, was just, as everybody who met him knows, very hip, very sweet, very funny, very social, and totally about music. So when you bring all those qualities together, into a studio or into a into an office even it just makes for a great hang and that's what tommy was all about just getting the feeling in the room to feel so good you kind of forget what you're worried about you kind of forget the problems in the world and for that moment that you're there in the room with tommy you're with him you're all about the music and he he had a certain kind of uh magic the first time i met him it was literally i met him and he invited me to go to the studio with him he was producing a record with uh, phil upchurch the guitar player and i went just to kind of hang out and uh, i wound up playing organ on a tune and it was a hang and it's it's just he he was like organically he was a bebopper down to his socks you know he really was something but think about it too it was al schmidt you know so think yeah. about that kind of magnificent um yeah. ear in the room who right. who is also you know a king of sound yeah. and so yeah. you think about those fellows coming up the ranks and and locking arms so to speak um that kind of that kind of music maker is hard to come by these days in terms of yeah, and yeah they, be, they became best friends really totally they i love married. this i love the story the story of his journey was so well well documented ben really oh. i mean how he learned from phil Spector. i mean Personally, I'm not a fan of the Wall of Sound, personally, mm -hmm. but uh, when I worked with Joel Dorn, Dorn he yeah. thought Phil Spector was a god, Yeah, you know, from a producer's standpoint, that de like developing that Wall of Sound thing with doubling and echo and um, making, mm -hmm. making, uh, making the sound bigger in that way. You know? Well, one of the things that I learned about Tommy from doing the book was... Uh, just how tactful he was. I just always thought he was just uh, just a nice guy, but he was more than a nice guy. He was very tactful and very uh, open to everybody. He, he really never, I never heard him say bad stuff about any musician or whatever. If he didn't like it, he would say why and go on. But yeah, uh, that positivity is something that has nothing to do with the business, it has everything to do with people. And, also, uh, well, he he suffered quite a bit as oh, a kid, and there it is. Right, and that there story, it is. right? There, I mean, there it is. For he, the he, for the people that I don't want to ruin the book for for our listeners, but something happened in his childhood that uh, a physical thing. Right, he that, was in, that, he he was uh, either in a hospital or at home in a bed for two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. So think about what that does for your sense sense of 
you know, empathy and also, exactly. and also your sense of like figuring out, well, how do I, how do I now catch up with all my, my peers and how do I, you know, he just, I don't know. I, I, I that story for me, just, in, it's so remarkable to think about this is, you know, a really self-made person and really just kept right. going. I'm going to, all right. I just want to keep dreaming big. Okay. Now I want to be a promoter. Okay. Now I want to be publishing. Now I'd like to be a producer. Okay. Now I'd like to, uh, whatever, you know, and you're just like, keep going. Like keep dreaming everybody a reminder that how much we exercise that. Very, very true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really, I really feel fortunate to have rubbed, uh, shoulders with this guy for 40 years. We hung out you know, literally for 40 years. And it was the same. Every time you were hanging with Tommy, it was like a continuation of the last time. There was no How, how much downs. wine did you drink? Mm. Oh my God, his wine cellar. And when his doctor toward the end of his life uh, told him, you know, he had to stop drinking all this wine. Wow, he brought out the real stuff. He, he <laughs> you've, I've never tasted anything like this. It's, it was extraordinary, the wine that he had. The yeah. Chateau Neuf and, and I had some some contact with him at the at the end, you know, because I was teaching at Tri C. Oh, and they had just I, opened the Tommy Lapuma at G, at Jill Jill and uh, Tommy Lapuma. Jill and Tom. Oh, I didn't know School you taught for there. Creative yeah. Arts or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So we hung we hung a little bit and not enough, but nah. not enough. But I love how colorful your life has been, Ben. You two have just said, "I'm writing, I'm playing, I'm 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 teaching, I'm leading, I'm I'm." You know, I'm a wordsmith. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm perennially curious. I'm, you know, and I just think, you, you know, you're such a fascinating person. And I just. Well, th- thank you. Uh, you know, I was told early on I had to choose one thing or the other. <laughs> I, uh, and I, I never knew how to do it. And I was yeah. sure at the time that if I could do it, it probably would have helped which career it was but in the end it was all kind of the same to me i love playing i love hanging with musicians it's the greatest thing in the world i love writing and reading and 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 telling the story about these people my god i mean the people we've gotten to meet the jazz people of the last 50 years some of the greatest people of the 20th century yeah and so i mean i I don't know if if i could ever uh, choose one. I don't know why I would. It, why yeah, would you? Why do you have to choose? You yeah. don't have to choose. Don't choose. But also wait. But your son Leo, they're sitting there too. I mean, you're so included in the circle. And so, tell us a little bit about what um, what your world looks like and sounds like. I I mean, I am at this very moment. I'm like back in high school. I'm pulling the Chardonnay out of the refrigerator I, when my love, mom's not looking. You know, I love I'm just it. like right back to the old days. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know, right. I feel like I'm in a, like, a little bit of a weird time vortex now because I spent the last five months in lo- New York lockdown and then drove across the country with my wife and daughter to finally hook up with my parents. And here we are kind of hanging out for the month in, in their house. And it is really an opportunity to step back and look at the world. You What you described going upstate or going wherever you went and swimming in the lake. Yeah. That, I totally relate to it. And we come with all of this New York energy and this New York (laughs) concern and what we've lived through is so real. And it is not that way outside. In the rest of the country, it's different. It is different. It's really different. And some of it is refreshing. And, but also I don't fully, I don't know if I should feel comfortable with it or or not. Anyway. Yeah. uh, I'm hanging with Ben. Isn't week. that nice? Well, that's though? the important thing. That's yeah. the greatest thing. That's that important. Is the and stuff. before we bring out Mark, I just want yes, I just want to tell the story of when you and I, Ben, were at Carnegie Hall listening uh, to Diz and uh, John Hendricks uh, discuss the semantics and uh, the intricacies of Wu Papa Da. You remember that? I do. I that do was... remember that. And, and so we're listening to them, you know, parse this. This this song, Ooh Papa Da, the rhythmic intricacies, and no, I John's like, well, I've always heard it as blah blah blah, and Diz is going, but it's really, and then James Moody takes us, you and me aside, and said, don't listen to those. <laughs> this is the way it is. That's the stuff. That's the folklore. Put that in the goddamn book. That was so fantastic. That was so and, fantastic. And, and we never knew it, who was putting who on. Yeah. You couldn't tell. That yeah. was the genius of it. You don't know. And uh, and that's important, you know, not to be looking for answers here. It's just this. Just to be in the room, right? Just to 
be in the room. That's it. That's right. All right. Why don't we bring on our good friend? Let's bring another person into the room. Woo! Ladies Let's and gentlemen. bring our good friend Mark Ruffin into yes. the Yes. Hey, Mark. Hello. 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 Oh. Janice, I've been having so much fun. I love Ben and Leo. I didn't know you were in New York. I mean, in Madison. Yeah, I had to. I had to come and get a piece of this because hey, my parents just look so relaxed every time I go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, going there. Well, I, I love Central Stranded Time. It's a That's great where we place are. Right? I wish That's I had parents in the Midwest. Jeez. You can come. I'll be your parent. You All right. You want. <laughs> so, guys, you know what I did. I went mm. to Florida for a month. No. Why? Oh, man. Why did you what? do that? Um, To swim. <laughs> we were right on the beach. Wow. But And we and the, we got there a cool way. We drove to D.C., one piece stop, uh, put our car on a train, oh, yeah. and auto train to northern Florida, and then we drove to southern Florida. We saw four people. We had to deal with four people on the whole trip, had our own room overnight, and it was cool. Uh, and again, it felt good to be out of New York, like you guys were talking yeah. about, except I was swimming with Trumpers. Oh. oh. And we could keep politics out of it. Yeah, but, we could. Yeah. We don't. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh. But, but I know how you feel, Leo, being out. It's different. So. It's yeah, really, different. really different, yeah. but it's hard to come back. Well, yeah. New York is the safest place in one of the safest yeah. places in America right now, too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, we have a, we have leadership, and we we have um in my neighborhood, people are fairly compliant. So, yeah. I think it's very unifying. You know, I think the thing about being in New York is that unless you are so wealthy that you live in a world where you never have to deal with the realities of the city everybody's connected through their shared experience in the city. And so I felt the two people took it very seriously. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. And, it, and we're all learning. I mean, we're going to learn so much from this, from this event that we're going through and we'll be forever changed. And, you know, we just have to keep, uh, keep at it, keep, keep paying attention, but we're so, we're so happy you got, you got this baby up because here's your baby. Mark, and now you know what it's like to put out a baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. But, but you, you guys, will, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I love it. I'm like, I got it yesterday, so I'm this far, and I need to know what happened to Jug. And so I finally uh. had to, I finally had to just go, okay, I, I need to know, because I'm going to see him in a few minutes, so I need to know the ending <laughs> to that chapter. I love it. And tell us about what drove you to sort of this 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 notion of the, the fictional reality that you're you're painting for us. Um, I'm not getting the word right. What magic realism? Thank you. Know, I'm making yeah. up stuff. That's all right. <laughs> Historical well, fiction. Well, I, I'm really following one of my heroes, Ben Sidron, right there. <laughs> I mean, trying to do whatever I can to be creative and all the time. I mean, literally, since I was a kid, I can give you Ben Sidron. Sidronisms is what I call them. Ooh. You know, uh, in, in Florida, man, I was I was scared at a time. Anxiety, actually. And I think about Ben's song since I was a kid. Face your fears. You know what I mean? So anyway, I've been writing for a long time and I fell in love with screenwriting a little while ago in the 90s. My first screenplay, Janice, you appreciate this, was Fats Waller being kidnapped by Al Capone. That, Did that actually happen? It's a Chicago legend, you know, and there's from some. Chicago, yeah. That's right. Mark that's right. Well, yeah, I'm a Midwestern boy. Yes. Yeah. I was dragged to New York. Anyway. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> um, and I had I had a little success in that I got people to read it and people told me I was good. And this was like in the 90s. In fact, Terrence Blanchard, because I was working for Ramsey Lewis, he helped me get it to Spike. Spike wrote me this letter. And I'll wow. never forget, he said, uh, don't send period pieces to black film companies. We have no money. OK, mm. but it, it, it was really a, you know, inspirational thing. And I kept going. Um, and then in 2003, I won a little Sundance honor. I was a semifinalist in Sundance. And again, um, I got a chance to uh, through a friend, Malcolm Jamal Warner, go to L.A. And I was discouraged the whole time. And, People kept telling me history wouldn't mix you. You know, try something else with your life, something like that. 
And at the time, Brokeback Mountain was out, out which came from a book of short stories. That's this guy right. told me, yeah. And in fact, they told me, you have a Robert Redford seeing agent free card. And every agent I saw, you know, they were blowing smoke up my butt. So I decided to go home and write a book of uh, historical fiction. And it took me 17 years. Holy mackerel. And it also mashes up your love of baseball. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I have, a, like, I have a number of stories like this. I have a story about Josephine Baker in World War II spying for, uh, for the Nazis. I have a story about Von Freeman's relatives in the 23rd century. And, and uh, I have a really cool one that opens with the line, Charlie Parker, Dinah Washington, and Michael Jackson walk into a bar. <laughs> wow, I have to think about that for oh, a Okay, but dig this in this Twilight Zone story. They all have the same birthday. They all kind of died of the same thing. And it's kind of this crazy story that I mixed in. So I had a number of these stories going on. And that Michael Jackson story I had when he was alive, okay, if I could have got it out. Right. So, so, you know, I worked on the stories and then I came up with a theme. I had a couple of them with baseball and I had a couple, you know, and they all were about intolerance and jazz in yes, some kind of way. Yes, yes, yes. So I put two, it's only two of the stories have baseball in them. Not that first story with Jug and Bob Fosse and. And Bob Fosse. Yeah, that was, that threw me for a loop. It's big this. I, I hung out with Gwen Verdon, his wife. Wow. And now, and, that makes sense now. Okay. Yeah, and and she she told me these stories. She wasn't a a big fan, you know. After, but and and I I know George Freeman who played with Gene Ammons, and my mom was had a thing for Billy Eckstein. Actually, Billy Eckstein was mean to my mom when she was young, and this uh -huh. is kind of revenge. <laughs> so that's really uh -huh. how that story happened. Okay, but that's the only story that doesn't have baseball in it. So I just kind of put a theme together. Uh, concentrated on finishing and, and. So, are either of you going to go on a book tour? We're on a book tour. This is it. Right. right now. This, <laughs> this, this is, is the book tour. This is what, what touring mean? looks like, everybody. What I mean, yes. and this yes. is the news flash Wait. touring. And this is my first stop, guys. So, yeah. thank you. This is my first interview for the book. So, bravo. Please, bravo. Thank you. You know, yeah, I do, I, I, look, I just want to put in a, a plug for that Gene Ammons Bob Fosse story. It's it's just fantastic. I mean, just to think of that <laughs> as a trope, right? But then where it goes and how it goes. I mean, yeah. Wait, Ben read it. Ben called me. He said, "Man, I'm at the place where Delilah." He was just like cracking Delilah. up. So, yeah. I, I'm very interested in Delilah. I always <laughs> love. I think the world needs more Delilahs. Mark, are you kidding me? When she came in, I was like, "Good now, the, now, now the shit's gonna happen." I <laughs> uh, no, I loved her, and and you know, I just think you know you're almost using that same musician muscle where you're just like you're peppering in everything that you know with you know with everything that you love. Yes. And yes. all the people that you imagine yes. in your big band, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And you've got them all in there. And yeah. you're playing and you're playing your music and you're playing your words. And so that's that's really exciting. Well, and I'm you're, fresh, celebra I'm you're celebrating 40 years of broadcasting. Ooh, yes, yes. Congratulations. Uh, September first, September first, 40 <laughs> years. And not long after that, like in 82 or 83, I started, you know, now I'm on radio and I was writing already. Let me let me call people I admire and love. And that's, that's right. when I started bugging Ben Sidron that's that right. long ago. <laughs> and we've, we've done so much over the years. Janice, you know, I used to be a musician and one of the last times I played was with Ben, like 82. And when I worked at a, a radio station, WDCB College yes. of Page. Yes. yes. What is your yes. instrument, uh, Mark? Bass, bass. Oh. Oh, I know it was pretty good. I, I was, yeah, I was in, I was in a band camp with a Pat Metheny when I was young, and, and Gary Burton told me you need some work, son. And so I always tease him about that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, you know, go ahead, Lauren. You grew up though, and and you had you grew up with a record store on one side. That's right. And and uh, what was the business on the other side? My father was an electrician. There uh, it is. Right. I was trying to remember that. And then you carried that forward in, in your life as well, that skill. I just, I'm even seeing the parallels of like the La Puma story of like, you know, carrying your father's, 
you know, your, your, the, the story of your, where you come from into your profession and, you know, just loving even weaving. Yeah. Out Since what, what? my brain has been living in both your two heads for like the last 48 hours. <laughs> I, can, I can see it. <laughs> well, look at Leo, please. Leo is like, thank you. I like Leo's records. I do. I, too. Oh, I will oh. say that. I like oh. Can I, can you remind me again what the Spanish connection is with you guys? Why are you always playing there, and why do you speak fluent Spanish? And you know that my parents did this twenty three and Me genetic thing last year, and I was yep. just I was sure that it was going to turn out that my mother was Sephardic and that we have these deep Spanish roots, and that explains why I'm so desperately You're so in love drawn with Spain and, in love, and uh, <laughs> that that did not happen. So right. I don't have a genetic uh, explanation for it, but. You know, really, it's a, it is a kind of a strange thing. But Ben was my parents don't speak Spanish. We don't have any Latin roots of any kind. But my dad was very focused and a little bit ahead of the curve on making sure that I spoke Spanish. And they enrolled me in these Spanish classes when I was a kid. And so I always sort of had a, a little bit of a head start with my friends. And so by the time I was like 15, I was going over to Spain on exchange programs. And as soon as I went there, because I felt like the way you move through the world is through music that you talk about taking your kids on the road like that. That was the only way I knew how to kind of explore anything was through music. So I just dove deep into Spanish music. And by the time I was 18 or 19, I was I must have been the most like musically literate American kid when it came to Spanish music. I was just like, I was totally into it. I remember Janice, when you were on the road once in Madison and I was still living here and I turned you on to my friend, somebody who became my friend, Jorge Drexler. Yeah. Well, I fell in love with Jorge Drexler and you know, I wrote that an English lyric to solve a yeah. price. That's right. And, and that was an example of just where I, it didn't even occur to me that it was out and on any level to be into Spanish music. I just thought it was like, I just got super into it and, as you, I'm sure, experienced also, you know, exploring Brazilian music, whatever, you have a different relationship with a language when you learn it through the music, through the songs, Great. you know? So yeah. before I knew it, I was writing songs in Spanish and and Ben let me run with it also. And he said, look, if you want to be my booking agent, <laughs> go ahead. And so I just kept booking him in Spain. I just said, okay, we're going oh, we so go to- that's Spain. how it happened. Yeah. Where do you, okay. you want to be? <laughs> yeah. I love it. I That's love it. it. Where do you want to be? And you guys do know the Oscar story about Leo in Spain, right? About how he recorded something in Madison and it got nominated for an Oscar. What? And it and it and won. It won. Oh, that's right. And it and won. That's it right. Won. Leo, yes. Yes. Leo was talking here. about the Jorge Drexler too. Yeah. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's yes. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and then I had the opportunity. I mean, like I said, guys, I wanted to get in the movie business. That's yeah. It's been a bug of mine for a long time. So I've actually done music supervision yeah. on a couple of films. And, and Leo helped me with that with a singer named Lauren Henderson, who also likes uh, to do, mix jazz and yeah. Spanish together. And yeah. next thing I know, they're working together. Yeah. Doing some Thank you, Mark. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, so oh, Lauren's wonderful, man. Yeah. So, Mark, what does it feel, though? What does it feel like to have this this piece of work out there? And like Ooh. you really are going to share your words and your stories and your narrative that you've had stored up in your brain. Right. And so now it's out. It's just there's no putting it back in. So how does that feel to just set it it's free? It's like having a baby. You can't no, put my it God. In. OK, so, so like I said, I, I produce some records, but, you know, that's you guys dreams. I, it wasn't my name on it, you know. This is, it's like, I know how you guys feel. I know how, uh, I mean, I was really nervous. What are people gonna think about it? Uh, it really helped that I gave it to some of my friends, but that's when I was nerve wracking. I mean, because my friends are the kind who, I think Ben included, he would tell me if it was full of it, okay? Yeah. So, it could be, and he wouldn't put his name on it. So that was the first time I felt better. But then when the, you know, August 1st came and it kind of went out, I got scared again. Yeah. And so I and so I don't know the response. People haven't read it. And so but well, I think people should buy it and I think they should read it and 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 go on these adventures with you because it's really been yes. a, a delight Excellent book. And you've got uh, a beautiful introduction by Terry Lynn Carrington. Yes. And, and our buddy Neil Tesser does the yes. intro. 
Yes. Yeah. Now he's a Chicago guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's New Yorker originally. A ah. lot of folks don't know that, but yeah, Chicago most of his life. And and before I forget, guys, I got to tell you, Ben. You know, like I love Ben, and I've done broadcasting things together. I love yeah. him to death, and and he's been such a big part of my life, and in 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 philosophy, and and going after different creative ideas and stuff. So whenever I get a chance, I do anything for Ben. So when when this came out, <laughs> <laughs> we did a radio. I said, man, this is a great radio show. What? So in April, it James, is. It is we, a great radio show. we did a six part radio series. Uh, Leo, where can we hear that? Where can we well, hear that? Well, that's the news. It was such a great big hit in April for Jazz Appreciation Month. Sometimes before Christmas, I'm going to put it on again. Six weeks. It, uh, it's, I mean, four weeks. It's incredible. Uh, Tommy's life through music. I, I I told Ben all the time, the book, you guys described it so well. You didn't even talk about the music part. You talked about the family part, the journey. I love that because we all know the music part a lot. Except Everybody knows that music. That Tommy I could have wrote a whole did. different Tommy LaPuma book. He's, his 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 experience is so vast and I, so I was, deep. I right? was shocked shocked at some of the things. Yeah, yeah, me too. I actually, I forgot that he produced Tutu. Oh, oh no, I knew that. What, what got me was Dan Hicks. Was Dan like, oh, Hicks, God, yes. Dan Hicks, and Barbara yeah. Streisand, and the, uh, going far Reed. back is the OJ's, the OJ's, and the OJ's, right? Something else I love about Tommy, he was loyal. I mean, Bobby Womack. He stuck with Breezin all the way. I mean, how many, he recorded Breezin at least three know, times. Yeah. Yeah. Alan Toussaint, he stuck by, he, the people who gave him early success, yeah. he stuck with those folks. Yeah, ben yeah. Sedrin, please. Yeah. Yeah. He was a royal exactly. Sicilian guy. You know? yeah. Right. Yeah. So right. guys, and, where can people get your books? Yes. Well, I, we I say barnesandnoble.com if you don't like Amazon or Amazon, but one or the other. Yeah. That's the best okay. one. Okay. Can or they get autograph copies? Can they get autograph oh, copies from you guys? Yes. Yeah, so, well, well, what I'm doing. Boom, because, bang. Yeah, because I can't uh, come to your house now, is I have these uh, little, um, there, there's a word for them. They're cards that you put inside books and they uh, download. They, no, but they say the sticker. No, it, they, they stick inside the book. Anyway, if you write to me at ben at bensidron.com, I will send one of these to you, autograph the book to you, and, and dedicate it to you, and you can paste oh. it right in the front of the book. How about this book? Ah, I'll be glad to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Another drink, Janice. Janice I'm going to need another that. drink. He's right <laughs> and then, Mark, where do they find your book? Unfortunately, I'm just Amazon. Amazon. All I, right. I did self self publishing, you know, yeah. and uh, um, you can take it to Barnes and Noble too, Mark. I'll show yeah. you how. Oh, yeah. and, and that sticker idea, I bet Leo came up with that, didn't he? I think Amanda came up with that one actually. Oh yeah, but, yeah. Oh, yeah the sticker. The, thing, the nine good. year old came up with yeah, it. I know the nine year old did because it's all about stickers. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> okay, I have I have so many stories, but as far as Ben and his books, you guys know I recently got married, right? And in fact, we went to Russia with uh, Janice. We had so much fun. Yeah, um, we had a little fun. We didn't. Yes, we did. Um, but um, we were, she moved when she moved to Manhattan. We were going through her books. She went to Harvard, and as she was going through her books, her old college books she hasn't seen in so long. There was Ben's first book. It was used as a uh, as in the classroom. In fact, I well, gave it to Leo. I gave it to Leo. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I, I I wanted to say something about uh, your book too, Mark, because there's something very special about it, in that it's so narrative. It's the story. It's getting the truth about the music through the story. Like you talk about the Tommy book, it's not about music. Similar, it, there's something about uh, the the filmic nature of what you do. If I didn't know that you wanted to write. Uh, screen plays, I, you could tell from the book. Uh, you have movies there, whether they ever get made or not. Yeah, yeah. And that's and Thank and you. that's a very jazz thing because every time somebody makes a jazz movie, it's a tragedy. Jazz isn't a tragedy. <laughs> jazz is fun. It's funny. It's a magical experience. <laughs> it's a coincidence. As, as Blakey always said, you know, that's how jazz got started. Somebody goofed. 
Right? Somebody dropped the music. Somebody <laughs> dropped the music. And, and, and that's the truth of the music. And every time I see, you know, people who are very well intentioned doing jazz narrative uh, fiction, it's it, they're, they're afraid. They don't want to not treat it with enough respect, and they almost always go too far. I always say jazz musicians are just like the rest of us, only more so. They just <laughs> go deeper into it. Uh, and absolutely. You, and, and you caught it, man. The, thank you. Thank the you, Gene Ammons, Bob Fosse thing, man, is is hysterical. It really yeah. is. And, and and if anybody's a baseball fan, the last story is about 1964 yeah. and all the amazing things that happened in that year. Yeah, uh, it's it's amazing, and it's about the Philadelphia Phillies, a Jewish kid from one side of Philly and a black kid from another side of Philly, and how the Sidewinder, uh, yeah. the history of the Sidewinder is amazing. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh, that's, that's right. I you guys have like, a very cool version. Like, Janice sings the every yes, yes, crap yes, out yes. of Sidewinder. But, but Janice, <laughs> did you know that the Sidewinder was used for the 1965 World Series to introduce the U.S. to the Charger? Hell no, I did not okay. know that. Nope. And, and also uh, Money Ground. They used Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was the spokesman. The Sidewinder was the music. And I kind of put a story and... It's really a giant love letter to Philadelphia culture. So any Philadelphians out there, they would love that story. Yeah. All right. That's, listen up, Philly. Listen, that's yeah. that's beautiful. I, I love all these stories. Them? We can talk forever with you guys. I and this is Janice. This is maybe our first date um, for, for a while with with some very fine gentlemen. So I, I feel well, like I, I, well, I had to get I had to put some lipstick it. on. <laughs> what I put lipstick on? I even took shower. I know, oh, but it's oh. just it's so nice because I think we, you know, when Janice and I got this vocal gumbo thing going, and first we're thinking primarily music, music, music. We have to connect. We have to connect. We've got to, you know, still create community. And then and then we realized we needed to talk. Uh, and we have actually People two talk shows talk. before we even do the music. And I think because there's so much to talk about, and there's so much to sort, and there's so much to fight for, and there's so much to be you know, really uh, present for. And so um, I love that we've we've been able to celebrate, um, you know, our, our music history and also new works that are coming out and we're, we're continuing to produce even in this midst of, yes. of a yeah. trying time. Well, there's no way musicians are going to stop. Creating. We won't. You know, it's just not going to happen. And do you think, on that note, do you think, Ben, we could ask you for a song? Oh. Yes, uh, I would love to. I have my piano right here. Especially okay. since you're drunk. Let's do it. Exactly. <laughs> it's the best, it's that's the best when way it, to go when in. Good stuff happens. That's when the good shit happens. Yeah. yeah. Now, this wait, is now, a song. This, this is a song I'm dedicating. Uh, oh no! Wait. Oh, I lost it. No. Wait, Don't go anywhere, people. No, we're not going anywhere. Don't worry about it. Gives me a chance to no. say, Janice and Lauren, I didn't know what you guys were doing with all the we music from around the world. That is so beautiful. I'm. I'm I'm hooked. I'm a fan. Very Thank nice you. guys. You know, we are, uh, Mark, we Can't are trying and we are trying to okay, so you have just to tell me I can't hear keep it keep okay, it going and keep us connected and um so actually this this covid pandemic has given us the chance to reach out to musicians from all over the world. Yeah, yeah. So Okay, wait. Ben Ben's disconnected. So he's waiting. I'm going to give him the action sign when you tell me. Okay. No problem. He We're not in a hurry. You. As They're not in a hurry. We're not yeah. in a hurry. They're not yeah. in a hurry. Okay. Look, I want you to look at Janice. Yes. <laughs> and when she gives you the face that indicates that she was ready to hear you. Um, <laughs> the, the, the ready to hear yeah. performance. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, that's, that's it. Like, that, I think that's, that's the, the one. Yeah. <laughs> Don't cry for no hipster. He know what he signed up for. Look in the field. That rundown appeal. The passing ship, the distant shore. Don't cry for no hipster. Saw the writing on the wall. And it gave him hope. Just another slip.
it breathe slow. Our deeper truth he can't recall. Ah, but when young becomes old and cool turns to cold, that's when we'll see if the truth set him free. Until then, don't cry for no hipster. He had his day and he had his night. Let's call it what it is. But in a life like his, it's usually wrongs that make it right. about Tommy you know he's got his hat he's got his cane oh yeah don't cry for yeah. no hipster and it's for all of us it's for all of us who are out here trying to live this life righteously you know we know what we signed up for and uh we're prepared we're prepared you are prepared and the Beautiful. way you deliver a lyric every yeah, single man. word yes. every single way that you narrate and you write it is just yep. literally yep. a painting and it, huh. and it's beautiful it's so beautiful oh lauren thank you dear wow thank you what you didn't see was mark holding up the album cover <laughs> yeah no mark, mark, <laughs> mark, mark. Wait, wait wait did you have you guys noticed that these are all ben sidron albums oh, behind no. me I, I, see. See. Yeah, I can't see that far yeah <laughs> but they are I love them to death. Listen, so good to see you guys. Oh, listen, we are so grateful that you guys joined us. And you know, it's funny. We have a tradition on Vocal Gumbo Happy Hour because we try to sell, you know, at least 10 tickets pre-sell for our show. And I'm just going to take a peek. Janice, why don't you talk amongst yourselves so I can just see okay. if anybody's, you know, okay. buying the tickets. Because this is the new way that we consume our music while we're all home is this is yeah. how you can support the productions that Janice and I, we basically created our, our homes to be recording studios in March. Mm -hmm. We, neither, neither one of us were recording. Now we're recording, editing, we're editing videos, we're producing, we're doing it all and it's raw and it's unapologetic and we don't give a shit. Yeah. And I love, I love that the jazz foundation calls it the new gig. Yeah. It's the new gig. 
It's well, this is the economy. real new gig economy. They were already talking about gig economy before this, but now we're really living <laughs> in the gig, the economy. gig economy. Yeah. yeah, it's like, but what we do is that we, uh, if we sell 25 tickets uh, during this happy hour, everyone has to take a shot. Oh, my God. I, I could do that. Do I need to prepare? <laughs> I will. Uh, I, Are we prepared fact, to do that? Yes, I will leave. I'll, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take care of it. Leo will go take care of that. Okay. okay. And, 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 and we don't know if they sold them yet. That's I mean, true. We don't know. You, yeah. you have time. Why don't, don't you, you go get, get, get it? Even if you didn't sell 25? Well, well go, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, we, go ahead and prepare. Go ahead and prepare because yeah, pre prepare for everything. <laughs> Yes, be prepared. <laughs> prepared. I've got my vocal gumbo flask. Ready? Yeah, and oh, I we, love your flask. Look at our flasks. We are prepared. Which, which reminds me, I'm totally out of line now. I'm wandering through my home as you please can do it. But <laughs> I wanted to show you, Janice, when you pulled out the uh, vocal uh, gumbo flask. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. This is the, where is it? This is oh. the hipster flask. Oh, my oh. God. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, my God. Look how well worn it is. That's what I'm talking about. That's an original. Wow. The hipster flask. And it could be apocryphal, but I was told by the person who gave it to me, who's actually a very well-known writer named David Marinus, who's a biographer. And he says that, mm. Yeah, I'm falling Here, off the you uh, don't universe. Take, you don't need any more shots. Just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't it good to have the kids back home, Dad? Yeah, always, it's wonderful. <laughs> but but what he told me was it was uh, the word hip came from the hip flask, and that what I'm hip meant was I'm carrying. I got this thing in my hip pocket, so I'm hip. So you I'm must hip. have him there. Everybody needs a hip flash. That's I'm alert, thing. I'm alive, I'm aware. Oh, I'm alert, I'm alive, I'm aware. Is that what it yeah. says on there? It should. That's it great. It should, actually. Oh, it yeah. should say that. Well, they're coming in like fast and furious because either people want a flash... <laughs> Or they or want people, to see ben, or people want 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 to see us do a shot. So I think I, people want to see us do shots. And I think <laughs> I think we're really looking forward. So you you have to know that we are we're doing we're drinking to Kenny Washington. Yes. We're, drink, we're drinking to Anne Hampton Calloway, Rioton, <clears throat> Kaichiro Kitamura, and Mikashino, and whom oh Alame 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 Fernandez. Fernandez. So we're Sounds we're drinking amazing. all around it does all around the world. Incredible. It's so, kind of incredible. amazing. It is kind of amazing. It is I've never vocal. heard Kai Kitamura. No. He's a Japanese vocal percussionist and drummer, fact, vocal yeah. drummer. In oh, fact, yeah. Mouth, not, 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 a, not a beatbox, just a beatboxer, but he, he plays brushes with his mm. mouth. He sounds like Lewis Nash. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> He's got, well, maybe not really exactly, but like he's got that touch and that that sweet, sweet touch about what he's doing with his brushwork. That's kind of like, mm. wow, that's that's beautiful. I'm representing Japan because I have a uh, a soy sauce. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, All right. Because I don't I don't have a shot glass, so I'm gonna have so to this is a soy sauce. Yeah. All, All right. right. How are we doing on tickets, Warren? Uh, we're we're getting there. So I'm just oh, saying. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. And plus, we've oh, we've, we've so. spent. We've spent such a glorious evening with these gentlemen that they need to probably retire to their dinner and their, I don't know, their nine-year-old who's waiting to get them to run some laps or something <laughs> yeah. like that. And you've got kids too, Mark, right? How, how old well, are you? Well, my kids are old. Yeah, my kids are, yeah. They're long his, gone. His yeah. kids are seriously running yeah. laps now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 and his, your kids actually, um, unlike me, I, I, I think they did a smart thing and got actual jobs and stuff <laughs> what actually, yeah, it's unbelievable that's yeah, silly so, i don't know where you went wrong man. i don't either man <laughs> <laughs> while we're waiting for the tickets to come in yes. yeah i want to go over uh tommy Lucuma's list of how to produce a record oh good okay oh. and i want your both of you guys to oh. give me your opinions on these okay the i'm first my rule is down. pay attention mm. For Christ's sake. For Christ's sake, right? And it's amazing how pe how often people don't, especially That's right. in the studio. Pay yep. attention. Yep. yep. Mm. The second rule mm. is find a great song. Mm. Number That's the root of the whole thing. That's right. Learn from the masters. Mm. Steal if from you, the best. Steal from the best. Find That's your right. comfort spot in the studio, which mm. we talked about earlier. 
the control room versus the uh, you know the studio room with musicians. Mm -hmm. Listen to mixes at low volume. It took mm -hmm. me a long time yes. to figure that out. Right, key. Uh, feel the overall sound and recognize when the moment has arrived to get the take. Mm. Boy, you really got the, this. That's right. That's yeah. his thing. That's his thing. And a producer does everything that needs to be done from the beginning to the end to make sure the record's a success. Mm -hmm. That's the job. Yep. Good. It's like, yeah, Good. how do you be a producer? Do everything. Yeah. You got to do needs, everything. You know Whatever how that book changed? Be. That book changed me in that I will always be in with, with the musicians now. I will not be in the control room. Right. It was, it was very cool. That's a very good point. Yeah, and that was Tommy's point. Yeah, but I also think you know part of the the, the teaching is because like when I was growing up and I saw Tommy produce and I saw you produce and I saw these larger than life people, I thought you have to be larger than life in order to be a producer. It's not true. You don't have to have a wine collection, an art collection. You don't have to be any one thing. It turns out. I think to be a producer is the same thing as being great artists. You have to find yourself and your way. And every producer is going to find their way and still tick every box on that list that Janice read. Yeah. There's not one way to do it. No, there but isn't. I, 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 I was going to say also something I, I, I got from Tommy, even before I read the book, he had his people, man. I, I love a piano player, Brandon McCune, Lonnie Plaxico, and Dave Stryker. If I could keep those three together all the time, I could have, you know, you find your folks, man. He was really good at that, you know? Yeah. Oh, a absolutely. To a yeah. fault, actually, in fact. To a fault, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he had his team, man, and uh, I mean, with, with Al Schmidt. And, but also it extended beyond the studio. It extended into the corporate offices. It extended into everything he did. He, he not only went for his comfort spot but it was important for him to be who he was wherever oh, he was mm. you like for example one of the funny things about tommy is you go out to dinner with him and he would always go to these high-end italian restaurants and it would be hysterical he'd be looking at the menu and he'd be asking how is the rabbit today he ordered the same thing every time. <laughs> but he's going through and the major D comes over and he's telling about the preparation and Tommy's going, mm -hmm. I think I'll have the chicken. <laughs> he's rabbit. He liked the rabbit. He liked the rabbit. That's true. I, I think the, uh, the, 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 the role of the, the producer is to create the atmosphere for the musicians to create. To create, yes. And then recognize the moment to yeah. press play. Yeah. Play. Or record yeah. rather. Yeah. yeah. I know yeah. those, those are, that's an art form. And, and when you're lucky to be in rooms, when you're in the midst of that, it's really, it is thrilling. To feel that, to feel mm -hmm. what that's like. Leo mentioned something about Tommy, which was true. And it was so simple that I didn't, I didn't get it myself. And that is when Tommy walked in the room, he had a certain kind of an aura about him. The fact that he survived, mm -hmm. that he been in all these rooms that he had all these stories to tell that people wanted to please him mm -hmm. people wanted to do something nice for him they were inclined yeah. Yeah. to listen to him and mm -hmm. to give tommy their 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 a, be, their perceived best their perceived you, best he didn't necessarily i mean that's what i thought was amazing about him was I, I only worked with him a little bit not even in the studio i was just around him but i went to try see with him once janice and yeah. when i landed he said I want you to interview Jake, Jacob Collier tomorrow in front of this theater filled with people. <laughs> and I said, okay, you know, and he didn't say a single word after that about what we were going to do, how long or anything. He just said, could you do that? And I said, yeah. And I felt so empowered and emboldened because Tommy trusted me. And I thought this must be what all these musicians are feeling when they go in the studio. <laughs> like, oh, Tommy trusts me That's to it. be here. So I am. Yeah. I, I must be the guy. I must be the right, right guy for the job yeah. or the yep. right person for the job. Yep. Right. Got it. It's yeah. it's good to have that kind of person believe in you and, and feel affirmed and yeah. recognized. Yeah. And, that's and that's where those great moments come from. You know, all those moments. Like when you ask musicians who played with Miles, what would, what everybody goes, well, I don't know what to tell you, except he made it okay to be who I was. And uh, there it because is. he wanted, he knew what it was like to struggle to be mm -hmm. yeah. who he was. Yeah. I mean, he didn't want to be a barber. Yeah, that's right. he didn't yeah, want right. to be a promo man. Right, he wanted to be in the room with the musicians. He, yeah, yeah. And you know, Janice, at one point, at very, very close to the end of his life, I was at his house, 
And for the first time in 45 years, he took out a tenor saxophone. Mm. I was oh, just going to ask, God. did you ever hear him play? One time. 40 years on, after you played, he put the mouthpiece in. He had a beautiful tone. I said, man, you can play that thing. He said, oh, wow. yeah, I could play. Yeah. Wow. It was wonderful. It was. He had a sound. And you think soft. that he would have done like a little vanity project or something, you know, got, gotten together with cats that he loved and, and done a record himself. But yeah, well, that's when that's nice, though, when the, when the record when the record creators in, in the industry, when they were actually musicians. So they yeah. really could could actually um, empathize with, the, the you know, how sensitive it is yeah. to be recording in the studio. It's, it's probably I, I think it's the most vulnerable, naked place to be. I, mm -hmm. I, I go in and I'm like, oh, God, I hope this is my best day I'm ever going to have in here because I want I want it all to be captured today. And it's so much pressure because because, you know, what magic feels like. And it was usually yeah. at the rehearsal yesterday yeah. when you ran it with a band and you're like, God, why didn't we record that? Mm -hmm. Like you played that killing solo. And then and then I responded and we had this thing and it felt like, why didn't we? And that'll never happen again. And you never. can't. Yeah, so you know, where it's yeah. so much pressure. So that's why when you have the people like the, you know, the Aretha Martins and the yeah. Bruce Lundballs and the Phil Ramones right. and the, you know, and 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 the Tarn the Kumas, you know, that they 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 know yeah. how yeah. delicate it is. You need you gotta have an adult in the room is really <laughs> part of it. You need yeah. an yeah. adult that lets us be kids. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, you know, maybe that's an option, a possible uh, future story for you is like uh, Tommy LaPuma sitting in with uh, Phil Acuti or something. Some yeah. crazy thing. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you know? That's great. I'd read that story. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Fairy tales, too. Yeah. 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 Lori, Lori Green, how are we doing on tickets? I think if I were to be a betting woman, oh, we're looking good. We're looking. Oh, we're good. We're so oh. good. All right. So we've sold some tickets, which means that we can move forward to, uh, to, to, to to our evening and we can be so grateful to our guests. And we can do a shot, right? Well, well let's do the shot first and right. then say thank you. See okay? my, my little feminine okay. shot glass here? Okay. And you can have whatever you want in the shot glass. Yeah. It could be thank whatever, you. you know, we, we cheers. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. And, and you guys and, are the shiznit. <laughs> there oh. you go. Oh, you are too. Yeah. You are too. Thank you. We appreciate you. you. All right. Bottoms All right. up. Now down the hatch. Here's to Tommy LaPuma and to Bebop yes. Fairy Tales. Yeah. Bebop yeah. Fairy Tales. Thank you, Lauren. I oh, love you guys. Book Leo. Tour. This Amen. is the book tour. Thank you, Leo. <laughs> Thank you for including me. It was such a treat to be here with all of you. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah. Thanks, Janice. It was great. Thank you, guys. Pleasure to have you and all the best. beep a doop Boom, boom. Yeah, girl. That was so much fun. What amazing stories that these gentlemen regaled. Really great. And they're good friends. It's beautiful. Well, shall we call it a day, darling? Let's I'll call it a day because I'll dinner needs to be made. Yeah. And laundry has to be folded and songs need to be sung. Songs need to be sung. August 14th is is um, our happy hour, second happy hour TBA. And then August 14, we're getting right down to it. We've got so much music for you. you so much it. music from around the world. Japan, Singapore, Finland, Oakland, uh, Arizona, um, Long Island, Manhattan. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All around the world. People stir it up. Take good care. Wear your mask. And we'll we'll see you. We'll see you next week. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Calling all around the world. Mumbo jumbo, stir up the gumbo. Calling all around the world. Get a, get a dot with a rue, that's me and you. Get it. Have the holy trinity. That's get it. rhythm, chords, and melody. Get it. Come on, come on now, add your spice. Tell your story, very nice. Get it. Calling all around the world. Stir that vocal gumbo now. Get it. Get it. All stir it up, stir it up. Get it. Get it. Oof.